Hello everyone, my name is Ira and you are on the UA Courage channel. Five months ago we made a video with a visual review of the engine from the Iranian unmanned aerial vehicle shaded 136, which was shooted down. Photos of the engine were published by Ukrainian military. Today we were lucky enough to receive such an engine for the review. Unfortunately, we had time limits to film this engine, so we had to film the footage separately and voice over various technical moments. As a result, the visual order of uh, assembly may be slightly disrupted in the video. My husband Genia, he is a specialist in the internal combustion engines and he wrote the text uh, and I voice over the text for the video. There is a copy of two-stroke piston engine made, made by Limbach. The engine has four cylinders and a volume of uh, 550 cc. The original Limbach engine develops 50 horsepower at 7500 rpm. Presumably the engine from the Iranian unmanned area vehicle shaded 136 has the same characteristics. On one side, the ignition system and the propeller are attached to the crankshaft, uh, while the generator is attached to the other side. The propeller itself is wooden and attached using an old-fashioned method with the counter wire. Moreover, the propeller is directly fixed to the crankshaft without any G reducers. Assuming that the engine's working speed is 7,000-7,500 rpm, the propeller's diameter should not exceed 65 or 68 centimeters. The ignition system is the simplest, a magneto without any adjustments. The ignition timing is set in one position during assembly and can be adjusted. The fuel system is designed with four individual carburetors. The yellow tube is the fuel supply, while the iron tube connects to the blow-by chamber in the crankcase. Another channel is also connected to the atmosphere. In terms of design, the carburetors resemble those from the chainsaw, only larger in size. Two diaphragms, one serving as the fuel pump and the other is the fuel metering device. All four carburetors are controlled by single servo motor, which controls all throttle valves, valves at once. Cylinders are made of one piece of aluminium with heads attached. Such technology was used in the early 2000th century on the first airplanes and motorcycles. The design uses heat dissipation pads that resemble heads. In fact, it is an aluminium radiator that is screwed onto the cylinder with two bolts and a thermal pest. In this case, it is quite cheap to produce. The cylinders are installed on gaskets to the engine crankcase using a very old technology. The gasket is a cut from paper Coat it with the solid oil and assemble it. When heated, excess solid oil is squeezed out and the gasket becomes more airtight. In a classic two-stroke engine, the intake window goes into the scavenging chamber at the crankshaft. Here, the intake window goes directly into the cylinder and scavenging chamber. This is done one force two-stroke engines. This indicates that the engine operates exclusively at high speeds. Here, the cylinders are arranged oppositely, like boxer engine, and they work in pairs. That is ignition and a working stroke occur simultaneously on a pair of cylinders. One of the features of the design of this engine is that two cylinders have one common scavenging chamber at the crankshaft. They also have two carburetors. Usually one scavenging chamber is made for one cylinder for efficient operation. But there is simply no place to do it here. Moreover, at the high speeds the engine system works normally. 
crank shaft is composite with the rolling bearings. During the impact of the propeller on the ground, the crank shaft was, def uh, was deformed, uh, resulting in a beating of the more than one millimeter. Funny fact, there are traces of manual surface treatment on all pistons resembling a nylon matching. I assume that uh, this was done to remove the manufacturer's logo to hide information. The spark plugs are Torque L7T. The seals that were installed were made by NEC. The bearings are produced in Japan by Aiko. and in Korea by FAG. Some components are manufactured at a very high technological level, using alloy materials and the excellent machining. At the same time, some parts are made with lower quality. For example, bolts. Some of them have a slightly offset hexagon. It's not too bad, but it indicates the quality of assembly. From all of this, I can conclude that this engine was assembled in Iran. The necessary components were ordered from different countries such as China, India or even European countries. After that, everything was imported to Iran and the parts were assembled into one piece there. This explains the presence of high-tech parts and the presence of parts with the low-quality processing as well as the worn logos on the pistons. One bright example is the connection of the carburetor mounting seat. It is evident that the aluminum part of the plastic part do not connect along in the intake channel. The presence of such a step negatively affects the engine performance, as it can easily take away 2-3 horsepower from the cylinder. The people who assembled this unit did not have a strong understanding of how it works and why it's important, and there are quite a few examples like this. I hope the video was informative. If you have any questions or thoughts that I didn't cover in this video, I'm looking forward to your comments. Also, there will be a link to the description to another version of this video where the complete and correct order of dissembling this engine was captured. If you wonder, for example, how you personally could help us uh, to grow our channel, uh, to support our technical activity and etc, etc, etc. We do have a PayPal, it's in the description box below. Please feel free to support us and we will be so grateful for it.